start again. We're talking carbohydrates. Why you should be eating them when you're dieting. What supplement you must take with every single carbohydrate meal. Otherwise, something happens apparently. We're also gonna talk about refeeds. What, why, when, how, who, if, but. And stay around today because we're gonna rant. <laughs> So why do we increase carbohydrates occasionally when oh. we're dieting in the form of a refeed day? Because it's got a number of physiological and also psychological benefits. That's big words, mate. Yeah, I know, yeah. I've just got the source out. Yeah. You would use refeed days in extended periods of dieting. Typically at the beginning of a diet, you don't need that many refeed days. Hence why we've gone sort of three, maybe four weeks without one so far because you, you're fine. You're yeah. not gonna see any ill effects of dieting within the first few weeks. Mm -hmm. You would then bring in a period of higher carbs. It might be one day, it might be two days, it might be three days. And what that does is that just refills glycogen stores. It, it might improve NEAT, so your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. It's also going to help reduce sort of hunger feelings and to improve satiety by re almost resetting or resetting. I don't like saying the word no, resetting. No, I don't like resetting because it's like, <laughs> it's you can't do it. It's not a button you press. Because what happens when you're dieting is uh, a hormone called leptin reduces, right? Which is what's going to make you full and satiated at each meal. So if you've got less leptin, you tend to feel less full. What periods of higher carbohydrates do is, um, is increases this leptin response, okay? So you are regulating your satiety a little bit better. But also physically, you'll have loads more energy in for the gym, for the few days afterwards, it doesn't last too long. Basically by refilling your glycogen, you feel stronger in the gym, probably gonna be able to lift a little bit more weight or feel like you can do a bit more volume in that one session or two sessions post refeed, so it does feel quite good. Uh, and also you will upregulate your knee, as Mike mentioned, which means you'll move around a little bit more. And psychologically, psychologically it can be fucking hard to go forever without fucking anything. Mm. So giving yourself a little, you know, um, higher day or two higher days just takes takes the edge off, smooths you smooths off. Smooths you off, mate. Smooths huh? you off. On to the next point. <sighs> when should you have a refi day? So the first four weeks, roughly, of dieting, you probably won't need one. No. There's really no need. And even after that, you probably need one day. Like, you're not going to need three yeah. or anything like that. When you've been low-carb dieting for an extended period of time, and when I say low-carb, we probably mean... It's, it's relative to the body size, I suppose. Like, for example, like my low carb is probably going to be different to a 50 kilo female's low carb. Yeah. But I would say that anything sort of maybe 150 grams and lower yeah. for anybody is going to be low carb. Yeah, it, like I said, it is independent on the person. So I think, like I said, for me, being uh, around 75, 80 kilos, if I was to double that. Are you? Yep. I'd say double that, anything anything around that number is probably gonna be considered low carb. So for me, 160, 150, something like that. And if you're 150 kilos and- Of pure mass, If you're 150 baby. kilos of fat, then don't use that number as a- Yeah, as a, but as if a it's muscle, solid muscle, then well, we don't know. Well, do as you will, do as that. you will. It doesn't need to be a specific day of the week or anything like that, or- It doesn't. No, no, not sure? after leg day, no. Leg day. No, 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 it doesn't, no, 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 no. So why refeeds and not cheats? <laughs> All right. I mean, it might be tempting to do things that you don't want to do from time to time, but you end up doing them, don't you? You just, you just, you just bend over and you get it done. Obviously, a cheat, a cheat meal, a big pizza and ice cream is fucking tempting. What I can eat that on a diet and lose weight? Brilliant. Of yeah. course it is. Yeah. Now, for some, to some extent, you might be able to do this. <laughs> to some extent, you may be able to do this, right? <laughs> Such a fucking big calorie deficit. <laughs> a big what? <laughs> huh? There's nothing bigger in this bed. <laughs> A big calorie deficit in a week, then you might not be able to eat yourself out of that. <laughs> eat yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, what's happened to our life? <laughs> so you might you might be able to eat yourself out of it, or you might not. So that's why people might lose weight on a, with a cheat meal is that they're still not eating enough to take themselves out of that weekly deficit. But you also may. So if I was to have a cheat meal. I would easily be able to have seven, eight thousand calories, and that might have just eradicated the good work that I did in the week. Okay, but the reason that you want those carbohydrates instead of necessarily just calories is that the body finds it very difficult to turn carbohydrates directly into fat. So by overfeeding carbohydrates, you're going to fill up your muscle glycogen, as we talked about, and increase your NEAT, and you're probably very unlikely to put on any body fat if you keep your if you keep your fat intake low alongside it as well. And also, it's uh, carbohydrates that affect leptin because obviously a cheat meal would be higher in fat. Obviously there's a lot of carbs in it still, but it's the carbohydrates what you need for those physiological changes. Anyway, let's get back to it and then we'll talk about GDAs. Yeah.
Mm. Thanks for that, mate. That was decent. As if we just had the same joke <laughs> ready. Know. Oh, he's so in sync. Yeah. I wish we were in sync in there. Fucking oh, hell, I know. The you, rhythm, you were rhythm. done in 15 seconds, mate. There's no point for coming second, <laughs> is there? I win again. Now, there's a massive trend going around at the moment of people wasting a fuckload of money on supplements that are supposed to dispose of glucose. <laughs> Pointless. Absolutely fucking pointless. I don't know how this trend's come around, but this trend seems to be, you measure your blood glucose, if it, and somehow that means that you can then test when you should be eating your next meal. Bollocks. If your blood Ridiculous. glucose is, is too high, go to see a doctor. It's not a coincidence all these people are testing their blood glucose are going, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, I'm no a human, I'm a human uh, GDA. No. And all of them are, all of them are. Funny that, because you're not diabetic. The funny thing is about the whole insulin resistance and sensitivity issue that they talk about is they talk about being insulin resistant. They're like, I don't want to get too insulin resistant in you off don't. season, right? You don't. There is no way a guy, a male, who's weight training at 20% body fat is insulin resistant. No way. Not a chance. It's not happening. Especially if you're weight training, because weight training is something that's going to sensitize insulin hugely. And that happens for 48 to 72 hours post workout. So these people who train five times a week are always, always in a state where their body is sensitive to glucose. They do not need a fucking supplement to help them with it. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They do not Clues. know what the fuck they're doing. Because they're slightly softer or fluffier, like they call it, in an off season, they're comparing themselves to being obese. You're not fat. Nobody would call you fat. So you don't have a problem with your insulin sensitivity or resistance. There's no need for it. Like the people who who have insulin resistance, who are obese, who are obese and have diabetes and stuff, their blood glucose gets to like nine. And these people are looking at it, going, "Oh, it's 3.9." And then one of them got to the off season, and like, "Oh, it's up to 4.8. It's, it's a little bit higher. Potentially getting insulin resistant." No, insulin resistance is when you're up at nine and ten. Yeah. Not 3.9 to 4.5. Yeah. There's no fucking difference. No, there's no difference. And, it, and if you are at fucking 4.5, going to a little bit high. It's probably because you've just fucking eaten. And what is the fucking point in testing it after you've fucking eaten? You've already eaten! So I'm gonna eat my carbs. Yeah. Like, D Dan's just had a bowl of cereal. Then he tests it. Oh, my blood glucose is high. What can you do about it? Nothing, because I've already Nothing. fucking eaten it. Nothing. Go and chuck up. No, it's, it's, already in the it's already in your blood. Yeah. Ridiculous. So, what are you actually going to do? Nothing. You can't do anything. And imagine doing that each time you eat a meal. Go out to Nando's. Can I check it? I can't actually have anything. Do you want to order? Give me about 45 minutes, love, and then yeah. I'll order when, when my blood glucose is down. That's not a way to live, is it? It's monkey see, monkey do. It's the most. It's, it's the fitness industry in a nutshell. It is the fitness industry in a nutshell. They see people doing it and go, oh, I'm going to get on that because so-and-so is doing it. Yeah, so-and-so is injecting insulin. If you're injecting insulin and you're an assisted bodybuilder, fucking go for it, mate. Crack on. It is important at that point. If you're not, it's a complete waste of your time and your money to consider getting a GDA. Don't do it. Don't be checking your blood glucose. Do not get GDAs. They're both pointless. And the other thing as well is that this, this fascination with having low carb and high carb meals and thinking that by having your carbohydrates all around your workout, you're becoming more sensitive to insulin. Again, the way that you train, the amount of calories you eat, the body fat percentage you're at, it doesn't fucking matter. You can eat carbs at breakfast, you can eat them at dinner, whatever. It makes no fucking difference to how, how well your body can utilize carbohydrate or shuttle carbohydrate and your body does not have a greater demand for glucose post-workout. It has zero demand. For carbohydrates. Because you've just workout. fucking finished. Just trained. And also, Doesn't on that it. note, you do not need high carbs on training days and lower carbs on off days. You're still recovering in between. The times the time period is not is not long enough. You're still recovering in between. And the actual amount of carbohydrates that you're going to use in a session, you might only be expending 300, 300 calories, which is what? Fucking 75 grams of glycogen if it's all gonna come from glycogen. Like, so you don't need periods of higher and lower days. Some people who train might train so fucking hard that actually they don't move as much that day. They might do less steps. So then when does it stop? I've had an off day training, but I've actually done 20,000 steps today. So then do I, do I have a higher carb day, a lower carb day? It's so fucking ridiculous. And it's only making it harder to adhere to. You are not improving your insulin sensitivity by having no, one day, not. one day of slightly lower carbs and higher fats, replacing ridiculous. the calories with fats. Ridiculous. Fucking daft. So stop listening to these people. Ridiculous. End of the video.